Greetings everyone. Today on the bench I want to talk about amplifier classes and because of the length of the video doing them all together I decided to break them up into a series of videos. I don't know how many that there will be but I want to release them in quick succession. Three or four videos. I don't know. We'll see how it works out. If I did it all together I'd end up yakking for an hour. So I'll just split it up into a few videos. There is some confusion with amplifier classes due to non-standards and that's one reason for making the video. I see that some people are confused to what class the amplifier actually is. And one important distinction, when you're talking about the amplifier class, you're talking about its output stage. Like the JAT501 amplifier's output stage is class AB, but the preceding stages of this amplifier work in class A. So again, we're talking about the output stage of the amplifier. I will also interject my opinion of what I think of a certain amplifier. In other words, would I use the particular amplifier for listening to music? Okay, so let's take it from the top here. And we'll begin with Class A. So what is Class A? Well, that designation means that the output device or devices conduct for the full 360 degrees of the waveform. The transistor is always on. So even at zero crossing, even when there's no signal, that transistor is conducting it. And that's one huge drawback of the Class A amplifier is that because you want it conducting for the full cycle of the waveform, you have to do some calculations for the output power you want, you know, the load, determine the current, and you have to set up the output stage to draw that current continuously. So that results in a very inefficient amplifier. It's going to dissipate a lot of heat. The power supply has to be designed for continuous draw. Typical efficiency of the Class A amplifier is going to be around 25%. Often will be quite a bit less. Now there are some designs that can make it higher than that, but usually you're going to see it somewhat less. A big benefit of the Class A amplifier is that it can be very simple. I mean, you can make it as complex as you want, but often they tend to be somewhat simpler than the other classes of amplifiers. In fact, if you watched my channel, you might have seen me build a Class A amplifier up on a breadboard using a single transistor and a few other passive components like resistors and capacitors. Now, a Class A amplifier could be a push-pull output stage that's biased quite high, so both transistors are handling the full cycle of the waveform. But generally, you'll find them set up using some sort of current source and the actual active output device. The current source could be something as simple as a resistor, which would yield a very low efficiency amplifier. It could be an active current source and its associated circuitry. And in some cases, they even use inductors. Now when I'm talking about the efficiency of an amplifier, I'm talking about the maximum output power just before clipping divided by the input power from the power supply. So for example, with the Class A amp, if I wanted to design a 20 watt amplifier due to its low efficiency, I might need 100 watts of input power. And if I'm making that a stereo amplifier, that's going to be 200 watts. So even sitting idle, I'm going to draw 200 watts off the power supply. So I need to design a power supply that can handle that continuously. I'm going to need to use heat sinks that can dissipate that so that the output devices do not get too hot. So that design is going to make a 20 watt amplifier quite hefty and consume quite a bit of power, even sitting idle. And that's where I take some issue with the efficiency numbers. Because in real world use, your amplifier is probably playing music at a lower level or it's just sitting idle. Sitting idle, other amplifier designs use very little power. They're just drawing a bias current. And that's usually a few tens of milliamps, where a Class A amplifier is going to be drawing some amperes. Some audiophiles like the Class A amplifier because, well, there's no crossover point. 
because the output devices are continuously conducting the signal, you know, the signal's not being handed off to another part of the output stage. But I do think you give something up. With the simpler designs, you're going to have more lower order harmonics. But those are not necessarily detrimental to the music. And this leads me into my opinion of the Class A amplifier. Well, my personal philosophy is to design the amplifier to have low distortion in each of its stages before closing in the global negative feedback loop. And I don't believe any audio power amplifier should be adding anything to the signal. If you want to condition the signal, you should do it in a preceding stage. Now, musical instrument amplifiers notwithstanding, they are a different animal. Again, I'm talking about hi-fi amplifiers used for reproducing music, listening to music. But then again, you can design the Class A amplifier to be more complex and have very low distortion, just like its Class AB peers. But because of its ridiculous amount of waste energy, uh, I'm just not a fan of them. They're fun to tinker with on the socket boards, but eh, I'm not a big fan of them. A well-designed Class AB amp, which we'll discuss in another video, the crossover distortion is just not audible. Okay, so I'll wrap it up here for this video. In the next video, I think I'll cover the Class B and Class AB amplifiers and uh, the first bit of confusion there. Like I said, I'd like to get it out in a quick succession instead of waiting a week or two between videos. So we'll bookmark it right here, and thanks for watching and supporting the channel. We'll catch you on the next one.